All right, everyone, welcome back to Tennessee This Week. It is time to hear from our panel of pundits today. And joining us now, we have WATE Six on Your Side healthcare analyst Craig Griffith, WATE Six on Your Side political contributor Courtney Piper, and WATE Six on Your Side political analyst George Corda. Good to see all three of you. Glad Thank to be you. here. So we just heard from both of the candidates in the race for Senate. I think we can all agree the most hotly contested race that we are looking at this election cycle here. George, let's start with you. Did anything surprise you about what you're hearing this last week on the campaign trail? No, no. There, at this point, you've got your message. You stay on it. If you get off it, you're endangering yourself because it, then it opens up a whole possible myriad of distractions. So they're both staying pretty much where where they've been and Bredesen with his, you know, here's my thoughts on how we fix things and Brett Blackburn with we've got to continue the conservative course. So I I think they didn't do anything surprising and I think they're just trying to get to the end without making a mistake. Courtney? Yeah, I, I got a uh, phone call about this race as late as Tuesday. I had already voted. And it was a political poll or a political survey about my attitudes towards the two candidates. They asked me at least seven times who I was going to vote for and tested well, me on a bunch of different issues. When they call and ask you that, do you tell them? Just I did. Okay. I said, um, they asked me how likely I was to vote. And I said, well, I've already voted, so I'd say I'm extremely likely <laughs> <laughs> to vote. And the, the person that called just said, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make a note of that. So this is a really hot race. They're thinking that every single vote is going to count, whether it comes during early vote or whether it comes on election day, if they've got people that are polling, you know, this late this in the late. game. This uh, late. Craig, do you think the fact that, you know, as Courtney just said, people are polling this late. We're talking about flyers that we've all been getting in the mail here. Even up to yesterday, I believe I had more flyers in the mail. So are candidates kind of missing the point that early voting started more than a week or so ago? Or is this just a sign that they think it's still that neck and neck? Well, I'm not so sure it's the candidates that are doing this polling, but I'll get calls until next Monday on who, who I'll vote for because I must have a random telephone number. Uh, I have a landline, one of those archaic things, so they call me all the time. <laughs> but I don't, you know, I think we're devoid in this race pretty much of October surprises. I know that uh, Blackburn has pulled on to some of the caravan issues and things like that, but really both candidates have uh, stuck to the message, have tried to appeal to their base, and they're trying to solidify their base now while re uh, appealing to the moderates and the moderate Republicans and the independents. They, those are the people that they need now in their campaign. How much do you believe these final polls? Because we've seen, as we saw just a few years ago, polls don't always tell the truth, so to speak. Well, uh, they, they take the data as best as they can. So uh, I, the polls, I think, are have been instructive in this race. But I think probably more instructive is the pattern of early voting. Uh, I went back and looked at the at the uh, Ford-Corker race, mm -hmm. and the most competitive Senate race we've had in a long time. And uh, Corker won mainly because of overwhelming majorities in East Tennessee, Knox, Blunt, and Sevier County. Uh, Ford actually carried Davidson County and Shelby County. Now, you've had really high early voter turnouts in those two areas. But you've also had high voter turnout in the ring counties around Nashville, Williamson, Rutherford. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's why this race, I still think, is very close. You're I've seen saying, some polls, so, but I think that it's going to turn out to be a very close race. Here's how you can tell that it's, it's not been put away yet. If it had been put away, Donald Trump would not be coming to Tennessee because the Republican Party would find other ways to spend money and where to send the president. So the margin, whatever it is their internal polls are telling them, necessitates the arrival of the president in Tennessee to again endorse Marsha Blackburn. Do I think she's ahead? Yeah, probably a couple of points, maybe within the margin of error. But if, if Republicans didn't think that were true, Trump would be going somewhere else. And he's also going to Georgia. He's also going to Chattanooga, which is next to Georgia. I'll be there. There'll be as much discussion about Georgia races but as Tennessee races. Isn't there. it interesting that the president of the United States feels like he has to put his efforts into a red state, into Tennessee, to protect a red Senate seat? That's really interesting and telling of where we are during this election. That right, we're, to the we were talking about the presidential visit. I want to go ahead and read a quote. This is from Phil Bredesen about President Trump's visit. If we can go ahead and advance this here, I want to read this to you. This again was from Bredesen last week. I was actually quite pleased by it because I think it shows that I'm doing well for him to allocate that time at that particular point. And frankly, while that stuff is good for fundraising, and helped before, I'm not sure how many votes it drives. Uh, so 
Phil Bredesen kind of agreeing right in line with what you were saying there, Courtney. Of course, Kristen, I'm always right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want me to let you two go on that no, one no, for no, a minute? No, 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 no we, we aren't <laughs> saying anything about that. But early, so. okay, let's talk about early voting, though. So let's let's shift a little bit because we've kind of hit on all, how high voter turnout has already been here. So does this benefit one party or one candidate over the other, do you think, Courtney? You know, if you look at this district by district, you'll see in some districts, if you look at kind of state house, state senate districts, you'll see more leaning Democrat and independent voters coming out than Republicans. But then you go to other state house and senate districts and it's flipped. So, you know, it's so hard to predict right now who is responsible in terms of Republican or Democratic voters that's driving this turnout. It varies so widely just by county. Uh, Craig, you, you said just a moment ago that it helped Corker in one of the well, hottest contested races years ago. Well, uh, not so necessarily early voting, but the high voter turnout. Uh, in Knox County, it's my understanding the average age of the early voter person was about 63 years old. That's not a blue wave of any sort coming out. So I think the uh, early voting is just the base. The most committed people coming out and voting early now. It really isn't drawing up many new people. I'll be surprised if we actually have a total uh, total people participating in the elections that's any greater than it has been in previous mid uh, previous presidential year elections, Would which is higher for well, the Democrats. Midterms. Continuously bank on younger voters, and it never works. And I re was reading a story the other day. It said four percent the millennials eligible millennials are voting in this race. The younger voters never vote in large numbers. Many they Democratic, many Democratic candidates have been left at the altar by the youth vote. So the only people that didn't were Barack Obama. So <laughs> what, what you've got is older people tend to skew more conservative. So in all of these races, this is like talking about the Super Bowl a week before it happens and talking about how each team is going to win because of some factor or some injury or some and there's no way to know well, even <laughs> just recently they were talking about the celebrity factor saying that the number of celebrities who are coming out are helping to drive the high voter turnout and it could be as much anti as it is pro yeah. it'll be so. interesting to see so, so does this change strategies for anyone Going you, forward, do you think? I mean, we only that? have a few days. We only have election day essentially left. No, right now, what you're trying to do is you're you're doing what Marsha Blackburn was talking about. You are concentrating on figuring out who's supporting you and getting their fannies to the polls. You know, and we we forget here because we talk about it all the time, and I'm sure the viewers too. We think voting is very easy, simple, straightforward, but there's a vast majority of registered voters that don't find it easy. They have other things that come up and it's, oh no, oh, there's a line. Early voting, election day, I can't tell the difference. When are, when, when are the polls open? Which one do I go to? And so the, the trick is really getting people to think about making a plan to go vote. Um, that's going to be the big, big difference. We take it for granted. We look at it as easy and second nature, but to a lot of voters, it's really kind of a difficult thing to, to do. Do both of you agree with Craig that you don't think in the end when all of this comes out that we'll see a higher voter turnout overall? When early voting first came out, I said at the time, because it was being promoted as something that was going to boost turnout, and I said it's not going to boost turnout. What it's going to make it is easier for people who already plan to vote to go vote. In this midterm, the Trump factor, the celebrity factor, the screaming factor is driving more turnout than usual in the early voting period. But whether it has anything to do with what happens on election day is unknown. Overall, we always see the same kinds of stories almost every election cycle. Early voting turnout more than expected. And then by the time it's over, what does it say? Yeah. Oh, it's down from last Courtney, year. Courtney, do you agree last real time. quickly? No, I, early vote definitely helps with turnout. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Every candidate now is getting their three-ring binder out that they got in Canada school. It says GOTV. Get out the vote. Out the and that's what they're going to do between now and Tuesday. They're going to try to get their base, people that's going to support them, out to the polls however they can. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. And still to come, everyone, we are going to get predictions on the hot races with Election Day right around the corner. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be right back.